there just isn't one list large enough to encompass all of the shockingly offensive moments in the world of animation. We a game of softball! That's why we're giving you another one. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for another Top 10 Controversial Cartoon Episodes. Hot stuff coming through. Ah! Dad, why did you bring me to a gay steel mill? For this list, we've looked at episodes from your favorite television shows that have either been banned, protested, criticized, or all of the above. From violence to racial and cultural insensitivity, the shocking material in these tunes may make you want to reprogram your TV settings or tell your children to leave the room. Just a quick note, some of the images and themes of the cartoons on this list are regarded as highly offensive. So watch at your own discretion. Stop! You're far too late! If you didn't see an episode you thought should be on the list, be sure to check out our first list of the top 10 controversial cartoon episodes. You're all sick! Oh, be nice! Number 10, SpongeBob, you're fired. SpongeBob SquarePants. Hey, Mr. Krabs, what's the good word? Well, actually, SpongeBob, uh, there's two words. And they're not very good. You're fired. <laughs> In this TV special, serving as the 11th episode of the animated TV series' ninth season, Mr. Krabs discovers that he can save a nickel more by discharging his prized fry cook. How about if I work for free? Yeah, I looked into that. Apparently, it's illegal. This means that SpongeBob is forced out of his position and left unemployed. Hey, buddy, are you ready? Ready for your first day of glorious unemployment? Or as I like to call it, fun employment. In an attempt to cheer him up, Patrick introduces his best friend to the joys of not having a job, describing the event as fun employment. The two then slack off for the rest of the day, ignoring all responsibilities and duties. Next on our itinerary, a brief mid-morning siesta. Though SpongeBob eventually realizes what he's doing and starts looking for a job at several fast food joints, the episode's representation of unemployment sparked heavy political debate and pulled into question the real message it was sending to the youths and underprivileged. You're rehired, boy. All right! Now my life has purpose again! Number nine, Dial M for Monkey, Barbecuer, Dexter's Laboratory. Surprise! <laughs> In this early episode of the Cartoon Network series, Monkey is celebrating his birthday with all of his justice friends at a barbecue they hosted for him. After being rudely interrupted by the titular evil alien and his partner Silver Spooner, Monkey is forced not only to save his birthday barbecue, but the whole universe. Oh yeah, we got your feast right here. Get him, boys! <laughs> Why'd this episode get banned in countries like the US, Canada, and the UK, you ask? It raised criticism regarding its stereotypical depiction of homosexuals via the Silver Spooner character. Judy Garland! <laughs> and also included the depiction of an inebriated character via the show's parody of the Incredible Hulk, known as Krunk. Monkey now. <laughs> and it's up to you to drive Krunk home. Number eight, Buffalo Gals, Cow and Chicken. Buffalo Gals, won't you come out tonight? Come out tonight, come out tonight! Pair with a segment entitled Cow and Chicken Reclining. This first part of episode seven from season two of the Cartoon Network series following the titular animals garnered such debate and criticism that it was only ever broadcast on TV once. Here's my car, right by any time! While the show's humor has always been unconventional, the sexually suggestive content featured on Buffalo Gals, along with the heavily implied stereotyping of lesbians, led the network to ban the segment and have the episode air with a replacement segment in the future instead. Oh, the Buffalo Gals! A motorcycle riding gang that randomly bursts into people's homes and chews on their carpet! Buffalo Gals? <laughs> Move! Saddle up, gals! Number seven. Last Horizons, Tailspin. Well, I said I'd find Panda Lawful was the last thing I did. And this looks like the last thing I'm gonna do. This Disney cartoon series came under some heat with the temporary ban of this particular episode. Welcome, strange one. I trust you come in peace. 
in Last Horizons, Baloo is welcomed into the legendary city of Pandala with open arms, only to realize that this reception was all a ruse for Emperor Wan Lo to overtake Cape Suzette. People of Cape Suzette, your guns are useless. Prepare to surrender to the fight of Pandala. The fictitious Asian nation's attack is dangerously reminiscent of Japan's Pearl Harbor attack against the U.S. naval base in 1941. Aside from the World War II reference, the episode also contained various offensive Asian stereotypes, which led to the ban. I thought we were friends! We have no friends! We live to conquer, and where we conquer, we live! Number 6. Homer's Phobia, The Simpsons Hi, I'm John. Can I help you with anything? Although the animated sitcom had already touched on gay and lesbian themes in previous episodes, this specific episode was the first to fully focus on them, and thus was both the most praised and criticized for it. Didn't John seem a little... festive to you? Couldn't agree more. Happy as a clam. He prefers the company of men. Who doesn't? When Homer befriends a shop clerk named John and later figures out he's gay, the Simpson patriarch begins to adopt homophobic behavior towards him and develops fears that John's sexuality will influence his son. Where'd you get that shirt? I don't know. Came out of the closet. Uh, huh. Despite a lot of viewers being unimpressed with Homer's character and the presentation of homosexuals in general. Hello! The episode ironically received positive critical response for its anti-homophobia message. Queer? Yeah, and that's another thing. I resent you people using that word. That's our word for making fun of you! We need it! Number 5. Br'er Rabbit, Song of the South Why, you said there was a tale about Br'er Rabbit not coming back to his briar patch. Oh, bless my soul, child. I sure did. This dated film is yet another swept-under-the-rug reminder of Disney's very different take on kid-friendly animation. The live-action-slash-animated musical features an implied ex-slave referred to as Uncle Remus, who exhibits highly offensive racist stereotypes. Is that right, Uncle Remus? Well, you see, Miss Sally, I had... I see. The NAACP described the character as presenting a, quote, idyllic master-slave relationship in their public statement. For, despite being post-Civil War, in other words, post-slavery, Remus and his companions were often depicted as subservient to the family that once owned them. I don't like to say this, Uncle Remus, but from now on, I want you to stay away from Johnny. You understand? Aside from the controversy about the live-action sections, Song of the South also featured animated segments around Br'er Rabbit that were subsequently aired on TV. I ain't going to no party, cause I ain't gonna be here. I'm gonna leave this old place. You mean you leaving your old Briar Patch? That I is. These ignited debate because of suggestions that the figure signifies enslaved Africans and depicts them as tricksters, which isn't always a positive thing. What you doing up there? Oh, keeping the crows out the cornfield. I's making a dollar a minute. A da dollar a minute? Dida is. Would you like to make a dollar a minute, Brother Bear? Uh, yeah, but... You know, you'd make a mighty fine scarecrow, Brother Bear. Uh... As such, the entire film has yet to have been released for personal viewing. But its signature song, Zippity Doodah, is still widely recognized today. Zippity Doodah, Zippity A. Wonderful feeling, wonderful day. Yes, sir. Number four Rude Removal, Dexter's Laboratory. I hope you like it. Well, what do you think, Dexter? I think it tastes like. <laughs> oh! Little kids swearing is never a good look for a children's cartoon series. When Dexter comes up with the ingenious idea to separate the rudeness within him and his sister, their clones wreak havoc in their home lives and speak in a way we've never witnessed the character speaking before. What up, are we? Beach the out of me! This band episode ran into trouble with its excessive use of profanity, and despite being censored with beeps, the bad words being said were still clearly decipherable. That was very rude, and we are in want of an apology. Yeah, here's your apology. Yeah, it's lunchtime. 
Lunchtime, I'm starving. The characters also depicted various cultural stereotypes, as the nice Dexter and Dee Dee spoke with English accents, while the rude clone spoke with a New York City one. Look, lady, that's cute and all, but let me tell you something, I make my own rules. As a result, Rude Removal never actually aired on TV and was only viewable online over a decade after its production via Adult Swim's YouTube channel. So you're off then? Yeah, we're gonna go f up your lab! Number 3. Return of the King, The Boondocks Oh shit, my MLK! Ha ha! Hey, what's up, folks? Hey, that kind of dream shit was off the chain, Okay. Hey, hold up, Thank you very much. He learned that streets named after him weren't the very safest. This satirical comedy took a very interesting stance on the famed activist and humanitarian Dr. Martin Luther King. And although the episode addressed many of the country's socio-political issues, there were many viewers who couldn't get past how it was all presented. King amazed the world when on November 2nd, seven days after awaking from a 30-year coma, he showed up to vote in the 2000 presidential election. He was turned away due to voting irregularities. In Return of the King, Dr. King awakens from a 32-year coma after surviving an assassination attempt and discovers the outcome of his years of civil rights activism. Well, you know, Puffy, like you, I can't stop. I won't stop. I don't even know how to stop. When he takes the stage to deliver a speech, he loses his temper and shouts the N-word more than once. Will you ignorant please shut the hell up? He just said what I think he said. The episode was not well received by civil rights activist Reverend Al Sharpton, who claimed it desecrated black historic figures. And I know some of you don't want to hear me say that word. It's the ugliest word in the English language, but that's what I see now. Number two, Bugs Bunny nips the nips, Merry Melodies. What's up, Doc? Yet another cartoon that was unfortunately a victim of its time. Yaps. Hundreds of them. This calls for strategy. While we've all at one point enjoyed Bugs Bunny's regular shtick, it comes off almost cringeworthy in this short's racist depiction of the Japanese. Oh, regrettable incident. Oh, not unknowing honorable general. For instance, one of the soldiers Bugs comes into contact with is drawn as a height-challenged man with exaggerated Asian features and is shown wielding a machete while muttering Japanese gibberish. The bunny also uses racial slurs throughout. Here you are, here's yours, bull eggs. Here, one for you, monkey face. And don't shove this plenty for all. Here you are, slant eyes. Everybody gets one. Back in the day, this World War II propaganda animated cartoon served to portray American enemy soldiers as lesser and inferior. The only thing it serves as today is an embarrassing reminder of the past. Here's some scrap iron for Japan, Moto. <laughs> Happy landings! Before we unveil our number one pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Pepperan, do you want breasts? What? I'm baking chicken. Do you want breasts or thighs? Don't be scared, Mummy. Get rid of it! Okay, we'll take Mr. Skinny Legs into the garden. But you know what? It's one more person to share the world with. Another little voice in the back seat of the car. One more griffin to love and to love us in return. We had the abortion. Number one, heroes, Beavis and Butthead. Whoa, guns are cool. America has tolerated a lot from these nonchalant teenage misfits, but this episode went a bit too far. Hey there, welcome to Bob's Fancy Skeet. You boys 18? Uh, no. After the boys watch a riveting episode of Cops, they illegally obtain guns from the owner of a skeet shooting establishment and haphazardly fire them outdoors. This is cool. Uh, push. <laughs> uh, pull. <laughs> One of Butthead's shots hits a commercial airliner and sends it hurtling down to its doom. 
<laughs> the banned episode was not only criticized for its blatant disregard of firearm safety, but also for the inhumane mocking of the trapped passengers of the demolished aircraft. Help us! Help us! We're trapped in here! Please, we have two pregnant women on board! <laughs> How did that happen? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you agree with our list? What cartoon episode do you think was the most controversial? For more awesome top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. You know me, Marge. I like my beer cold, my TV loud, and my homosexuals flaming.